Now that's fresh Mountain Brew Coffee from the hills of Columbia. You guys want to see something crazy? Wait till you guys see this thing. It's absolutely insane. Watch this. Sasquatch in its natural habitat. What are you doing, Sasquatch? Good morning. Oh, butt scratch. Oh, the coffee too, stink. Hmm? What are you doing? I'm dying for the morning. You took a bubble. All right, time for some work. I think it's time to make this room not a disaster. And clean. God, I love that trick. All right, let's wake up some tanks here. Hello, fishies. There's some cherry barbs in here. A heck of a lot of cherry shrimp, too. Kind of see one there. Snails, some pest snails, and some big neurites. An absolute massive, I guess, bush of java moss. This stuff is awesome. Literally started, you can probably see it on the wood back there. It was like glued to it. That melted away and then ended up working its way up to the top and turned into this massive carpet on top of that piece of wood. In case you guys are wondering, this is the uh, Fluval Flex 15. Yeah, one of my first aquarium since I was a kid, really. Um, but we're gonna be doing some tank maintenance on it. As you can see, the water level on this side, pretty high, and on the back side, not so much. That secondary filter, that one right there. Can't get my thumb in there. That one right there gets clogged. I have a pre-filter set up, which I'll show you guys once I pull it out. It's actually pretty, Pretty trick. I actually might do away with this filter and then just put the bag of um, the bag of media inside there, and then I don't have to worry about it. I did it on my other tank, which I'll show you in just a second. But you can see the water level starts to drop. And I don't want it dropping below that heater, so we'll pull it out. That's actually a three-stage filter, and uh, I'll show you what I do in just a little bit. But I'll show you the other tank on this side. This is the Fluval Flex 32 gallon which is absolutely awesome. I recently started doing some, the Seachem fertilizer schedule. And it's actually pretty wild. It ended up like the growth exploded, as you can tell. Um, don't mind these guys right here. These, these are clippings from the, uh, from the flip, from that 15 gallon on that giant bushy, I can't remember what kind of plant it is. And this is Atheraneki something or other, I can't pronounce. And the tiger lotus, absolutely insane on this tank. This one is getting there. Hey, hang on. Let me see if I'm gonna Tetras. I do have a Siamese algae eater hanging out here somewhere. It's hiding usually. Don't mind the crazy waterfall, it's getting a little low. I usually keep this propped up and uh, kind of gives a cool shimmer effect, but I'm actually gonna end up changing this, removing the hood and light and going with um, something else, but this had it had one of those sponges in here and one in here. So I just took a giant media bag, put all the media in there. Probably have enough media in this tank for like 
a hundred gallons if you go by what the box says. It's pretty wild actually. And I did a little custom trick inside of here. There's um, these plastic tabs that comes in the tank and I actually took a hacksaw blade, cut them out, and now I slide in um, filter floss mats. And it does an unbelievable job of keeping this tank clear. Sorry about the glare on and off. But you can see all the Tiger Lotus. I mean, is that cool or what? Gives a really cool shadows inside the tank and shimmers. Pretty sweet. I'm digging it. So anyways, we're gonna do some water changes today on both. That one, I gotta clean that sponge or maybe even just get rid of it. I might just get rid of this one sponge over here and then not have to worry about that constantly. It's because of the where the, the filter is, the pump. Mm, you can't really see it. But the pump is on the bottom there. It always ends up doing what you guys see, which is getting really low. You can kind of see the pump down there. Yeah, let me see if you can see any shrimp. Maybe you guys see some shrimp in there. Look at all the little babies. Is that cool or what? It's like a breeding ground for cherry shrimp. I love these little guys. Literally no work at all. You just put them in and let them do their thing. I started out with four. This tank, when I first had it, first set it up, it, I, I, I can't even imagine it. It must have had 150 in there, 200. And then I kind of put this, I put the Siamese algae eater in here as well. Oh, look at that guy. Check him out. He's pretty neat. The uh, bamboo shrimp. Kind of like filter feeders. Where is the Siamese algae eater? Hiding somewhere in there. Hello. You sleep? Anyways. So we're gonna uh, do some tank maintenance, like I've said 15 times now. Repeating myself. And I will walk you guys step by step on how I do it. Heading down to the dungeon. I.e. basement, don't mind my laundry. As you can tell, I'll give you a quick sneak peek. Got a big collection of manzanita wood, some some, some stone, oh, I forgot that's full of rocks, but Siriu stone, manzanita wood, I got whatever kind of wood that one is, I completely forgot, Malaysian driftwood, all kinds of cool stuff. So I used to do five gallon buckets, when I was just a one tank, the 15 gallon, I would take, you know, the vinyl hose that I have hanging here, blah, 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 siphon it out into one of these and carry it out into that. Well, over time carrying out five gallon pails of water, it gets pretty freaking heavy. I mean, it's eight, eight times five is what? 40, 40 pounds. So you got 40 pounds out. So then I get another tank, 32 gallons. And when you do 15 gallons of water changes between the two tanks, that's a lot of carrying of water. So now, I have this guy right here. So this is the vinyl tubing, just the, I don't know, 20 feet or so, give or take, of three quarter vinyl. Three quarter or half inch, anyway. Um, so now I just put it into the tank with a little clamp. I literally open my window across my bed and my window is just low enough for it to siphon out the water from the 32 gallon across the bed. The, five, the uh, 15 gallons a lot closer so it's not too big of a deal to get that to siphon and with that I got a 20 20 gallon 20 gallon brute, brute pail and I bought a um, I forget what brand this is brand name submersible pump I don't know what the heck it is really, but it was a relatively cheap pump off of Amazon and it's like 1200 gallons per hour then I have hooked up to three, or yeah, this is that size. And I have about 25, 30 feet or so of this. I have a ball valve to control it, control the flow, because it is a lot of flow to fill up a tank. And then I have a remote control power adapter. So I can just, with a remote control, turn a pump on and off in my room, and I'll have to constantly run around chasing cords and blah, blah, blah. So we'll go upstairs, fill it up and make it happen. All right, so pretty much what I got to do here now, well, a quick sneak peek at uh, some frog bit and the other one I can't remember the name that have been growing out. 
know, like a little tiny patch of each, like really small, and just growing it out in a giant Tupperware. Pretty awesome. Anyway, so I gotta run the hot water for quite a while, get it up as hot as I can get it. And then I sit here with a temperature probe for however long it takes and get it to be at right about 82 degrees, give or take. And when I get it to 82 degrees, even though my tanks are at 80, by the time it fills this thing up, it, the water about is right around like 80 and a half, just shy of 81. And it ends up being perfect for the tanks. warms up the tubing, which makes it more uh, pliable so I can unwind it into the room. I run for a sec, and you shut the valve so you don't get any air back in the line, so it's bubbling tanks, and I shut it off there. Drain this out, doesn't make a disaster all over your house. And that's that. Right, now that that hose is all set up, this is our fill hose, ready to rock and roll. Over to the tank, and these things are absolutely a godsend if you have a Fugal Flex. I actually found out about these from uh, Peck Tech. He's kind of the one who introduced me to the Fugal Flex. And uh, this guy on, on uh, Etsy 3D prints these things. They're awesome. And what they do, so I could do this one handed. Come on, go. And it goes there and literally sits right on the side of the tank. And you get that one in there. And just like that, you have something to hold the lid open. Otherwise, the thing falls all over the place. And it's just the nightmare I work with. So you can pretty much do, like, if you're just doing a water change, you're not messing around with what we're going to be doing, which is back there. It's absolutely amazing. You just drain the tank, clean your glass, fill it back up, done. But in this case, we're going to do the drain the tank. It'll do, these will stay in about, eh, you know, 80% of the time. And then we're going to pull them out and then work on the back right there. I also kind of prep a little bit when I do this because it is definitely a project especially when you have it in a room so I just put a towel across the bed got all my aquascaping utensils whatever some glass cleaning stuff this right here uh, Mr. Magic Clean or whatever the heck you call them those sponges with no detergents in it fantastic for cleaning the glass makes it absolutely amazing so I set up a towel here so I don't got to worry about spilling water all over this I don't even know what the heck you call these, this type of furniture. I ended up finding it on Lecto. Anyway, and then over here on this one, I just put a towel on the floor because they definitely get drippage everywhere when you stick your arms in a tank. And that's pretty much it for that. And, uh, all right, let's jump into it. Okay, so for starters, what I do is I come under here, unplug a heater and the filter. I just check for like kind of like pet snails real quick, and I usually just suck them right out the window. If we had any, let's see. Hold that there. And just kind of pull these guys out. I do have to watch for shrimp because I am not using the bucket currently. And you can actually suck your shrimp right outside, which would not be cool. Watch out. Everybody move. Else you're hiding. That's really about it as far as in this tank. Not too many pests. Oh, my leg. That guy. See it. And you usually gotta pick a few out of the out of this Java bush thing I got going on here. Alright, that's pretty much it for that. Forgot my drain hose. Back in action. Alright, so now we will do the main tank draining. I usually guesstimate about, you know, 
five gallons coming out of here. I kind of know from used to doing the five gallon pail where to drain to. And just like that, it is way easier than carrying pails of water out. I did one time suck up one of these cherry barbs, but luckily went into a pail. So I do have to be careful because they are very curious fish and love going towards the giant opening of this hose. So I don't want to do that because I'll be running outside to try and save the guy. It'll be quite the ride going outside into the lawn. So let's not do that. Now we're getting there a little more. I think I'll have to, whoop, easy. Don't be going into the hose, you nut job. You want to be a mono shrimp, try doing an escape route. Not happening. All right, I'll call it about there. Now I'll just do a quick run through of cleaning the tank, nothing fancy there. So I'm probably just gonna time lapse you guys while I do that. And then I'll uh, come back and I'll show you the filter on the back. show you guys what's going on here with this. So now I kind of got to do this sideways trick thing here, get that out of the way. And this filter pretty much just slides right out. You do get like a little, kind of like a shrimp guard, kind of stops them from going around it. Also, there is always shrimp in here, so I do have to kind of quickly get it out, drain the water. And the back of this, just slides up. Slide that up like that. And then this one has one shrimp on it, so I'll get him back in the tank. Go. Okay, that takes care of that guy. Hi. So I think I'm just gonna take out the big foam filter and just leave this in there. And these are what they look like brand new. I already pre cut them. I just get a big stack going and I have a giant roll of it that I just cut, prep, and just slap right back in there, like so. You really do get some awesome water polishing quality out of this. And it's three stages. And I don't know if you can see this. I found it on Amazon and it's actually called In Tank. I don't know if you guys can read that, but I will link it in the description below and you guys can check it out if you want to pick one up yourself. They're a little bit pricey. I mean, it was like 50-ish, $60, something like that. Um, but honestly, ever since I put it in, the water quality has gone, has skyrocketed. It's like really, really crystal clear. Worth, as far as I'm concerned, worth every penny. All right, so that's that, and that's pretty much done. And you slide that back in. Well, actually, I will mention this. The only thing I did have to do to this was the dimension this way was actually a little bit too big, like not much, but enough to actually make it really tight in the back of that filter compartment. It kind of got me nervous pushing on the silicone like that. So what I actually took was um, some 150 grit sandpaper and laid it down on a flat piece of wood. Took off probably a little over a 16th of an inch of material. And now it slides in like a dream. There's no pressure to worry about. That's the only downside to this thing. And I did notice it in the Amazon reviews when I picked it up that, uh, People did complain about how tight it was, but you just do that little quick trick. It's not that big a deal. It's still worth it as far as I'm concerned. When you buy this tank, it does come with like a bunch of like those ring type media, biological media things, but I ended up just dumping them inside this giant bag into the actual pump compartment. I want some Marine Pure. I actually have it right here. Marine Pure Biofilter Media. So you can get that, they're like the gem ones. And this thing alone, according to this, according to the box, actually says it's good for like 70 gallons. I have, if that's the case, I have 70 gallons worth in there. I have already noticed 70 gallons worth in that piece of foam, which I'm going to dump into this. I think the more the merrier. Over 140 gallons worth of biological filtration in a 15 gallon tank. But, happy tank. So what I'm gonna do is, untie this bag and being that I'm taking out that foam I'm gonna take all the media out of this get some of the water from that get this in there and this I'm gonna wing out the window wash save for later actually I'm gonna time lapse you guys real quick I'm actually gonna untie these bags dump all the media from these guys here into the larger bag and we're just gonna leave that in that compartment over there it's gonna be pretty cool Off the 
tripod. I hope I can try this. So this is where the this is where the, the foam was. So we were gonna dump that bag right in there. This is our pump. So let's do that right now. And there is like a little uh there's like a ledge inside that kind of holds the foam. So hopefully this actually just sits right on top of that. Woo. Yeah, pretty cool. And this chills right on top of that. And then all the water flow will come right through these little like finger hole openings. And it should be perfect. Alright, now it's time to fill this sucker back up. I just drag this hose over the top. I put this right in the filter compartment. Then, via remote control, turn the pump on, pump's running, now I open and crack the valve, and just like that, you'll notice the tank starts filling right up. And with that 1200 gallon per hour pump, I actually have to slow the thing down because the filter compartment can't drain it. It's actually pumping so strong, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's actually coming, it's actually forcing it out of the pump itself and coming out of the nozzles. Once we get close, now I hit the valve, turn the pump off, and I'm done. No more holding buckets or any of that jazz over the top of the tank trying to fill the thing. Pump on first, get the water going, and then turn the heater on. Okay, pump's on. Heater's in. Heater is running. And then just like that. Our flow is greatly improved and no more low spot in the pump housing. I'll show you guys real quick so you guys can see it. Yeah, you know, water level there, you can kind of make it out right there. That's the water level. And we're in pretty good shape. No more low spots. The water flow is cranking, looking good. Yeah, so it's a little bit cloudy. This this is from the marine pure particles, but that those filter pads will polish this water up in no time. It takes about eh, 15, 20 minutes or so, and the tank is crystal clear again. I'll show you guys the 32 gallon. I think I'm gonna do that one next week. I'll give you a video on that. If you guys think you want it, you guys let me know. It's pretty much the same thing as far as cleaning goes, just on a little bit larger of a scale. I do absolutely love the Fluval Flex tanks. They are awesome. I kind of wish they made one in like a 100 gallon or something like that. That would be pretty trick. Because you get the reverse bow front. Really, really neat. I love it. I do have a really cool unboxing video coming up. And if you kind of get a little sneak peek right there. Give you a hint. It is going to be going on a certain tank in this room. Wink, wink, hint, hint. All right, until then, be happy, be healthy, and I will see you guys on the flip side.